Hi, this is Melody Gray with the Houston Drama Club. This podcast is meant to help promote plays and musicals here in the Houston area. Our website is www.houstondramaclub.com, where you can find upcoming and currently playing productions. So join me while I go out into the Houston theater community to find out what's going on. Join the club and let's go see some theater. Hi, everybody. This is Melody Gray again, and this is another episode of the Houston Drama Club podcast. And as always, I say I'm so excited to be someplace, and I really am excited to be here at Match. And I'm with one of the producers for the Houston Equity Festival. And so if you can, please give us your name and your title. And uh, and we're also here to talk about WIT the show that she's also in. So please introduce yourself. My pleasure. Um, Pamela Vogel. I'm an actor here in Houston, originally from Chicago, and moved to Houston. It's been exactly 10 years now. And uh, we are producing WIT, and it's a self-produced project. So the Houston Equity Festival is a collective. We are professional actors. We're equity actors that wanted a space to produce our own works, the projects that we want to do. And uh, with, instead of just doing individual things all, all, all on our own, we have a banner called the Houston Equity Festival that we can all join, quote unquote join, and still do our own individual thing. So we're not forming a new theater company. <laughs> we're not incorporating right. another 501c3, right. Right. which are wonderful. We actually want to support the ones that are here. <laughs> yeah. So please go see theater. Um, all the great ones that are sprouting up, that are expanding, that seem to keep growing even as we hear bad news, you know, another theater gets a new space, yada, 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 stages is building, you know, um, Rec Room is booming, and that's brand new, Rec Room Arts, and, um, you know, Fourth Wall is doing wonderful work, and people, AD Players, brand new, from dirt to mansion. Yes. So we are all thrilled that this is happening, and it's growing in, in, in little bubbles up everywhere. So, um, we wanted to form just a collective, an umbrella. And what we can do is advertise together. What we can do is have a Facebook page in one place and a list of shows that are under one banner that people can see what's next. We started um, by just starting this year. Um, the actor's name was Dane Geist, and he's an equity actor here in town. So we're all over. And he's he the went one to who, my program. Yeah, yeah oh, that's yeah, right. That's right. For that's drama. right. Yeah. And he just insisted that we do this. <laughs> and people, people roll their eyes like, oh, God, the last thing we're going to do is our own projects. But he got it together and he mustered his own project up and it did very well. So right out of the gate, we he got a wonderful review and a lot of attention. Um, and instead of having just four people sort of put their toes in, we had five. We suddenly had five and we had a festival in this first year. We also wanted to truncate it to a certain part of the year. We thought, well, it'll be May to Labor Day. But a summer festival is not good for everybody and it is hard to do a show in August and who is in town. and those such things so it started growing in the timeline and like the kids do we decided well we're not defining what it is we'll figure that out as we go we'll just start it and advertise (laughs) so sell it first then figure out what it is right so we don't know um, what it may be it is certainly a place where people can collaborate all in the one space maybe even if if it got bigger you know a show at 5 a show at 7 a show at 10 p.m. that that kind of thing sharing the space sharing the expense but I didn't want to share. I mean, I wanted, I knew I wanted my own dates and my own space because it was going to ruin, you know. It was going to take everything I had. True. And I thought, I can't even see another set coming into our set. Although, of course, that would be possible. We don't have, you know, big production values. But I just, I knew I wanted my own thing. So there's a space to do your own thing your way. We're not in a certain location. We are wherever you want to do your show. Right, because so, I just did Death of the Maiden over at Spring Street. Right. So. And the next up, I'll give a shout out, is Shannon Emmerich. Excellent, excellent, outstanding uh, Main Street Theater actress for many, many years. Equity actress doing her own project called Every Brilliant Thing, which is um, her, her, her pet project. And she's producing that at Main Street Theater on their off days. So Main Street Theater said, yeah, you can have our space if you want these oddball days. And she said, sure. So she's right in their main house on these off days, w- rehearsing herself and getting it up, and she'll have you know their audience and ours. So we've started to develop this year. By the end of this year, we'll have at least a little bit of an email list 
of all the people who attended, right? So we're not just reaching out to people who haven't already gone. Right. And of course, there's a lot of overlap, but we'll have a theater goers who found us. Right. And we'll start with that, and we'll be able to do a mailing that, you know, Houston Equity Festival is back, and, and there's here th- new voices. And so I'll kind of finish my little preamble here. <laughs> the point is new voices for, for me. Yeah. I mean, this is a lot of money. So your investment is like, well, I could do this once, yeah. right? And I don't have another show, that, at least right now. I mean, um, you know, so it's not that same sort of thing. So it's always going to be new voices. Well, who else haven't we heard from? Who else can we um, do uh, do and see and go and, and hear? Right. Who isn't, isn't getting seen on the uh, stages as right. such? Right. And um, we have a contract that we're not to call a contract. So Actors' Equity created something like the 99-seat theater in L.A., and there's, of course, a CAT contract, Chicago contract. There's probably others. Mm-hmm. There's a space for this within the union, which is great. And they make it not a contract. We can't use that word because it isn't a contract. And you have an agreement, perhaps, and correct, they call yes. it a they call it the member project code, but it is an equity official signed piece of short agreement that is a code that says I will work without equity rules. So of course, no one's we have some pay along the way. Everybody's mm-hmm. getting X, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's it. Mm-hmm. And they commit to four weeks. We start and finish in four weeks. Mm-hmm. So we rehearsed in two, and we're up in that third week. So we came memorized, and we were right here in the space, and we did two weeks, and we're up. Right. So this is day like day sixteen of this project. It's, it's extraordinary. We've known each other as a, as a cast for sixteen days, and we're already in our you know second performance. That's amazing. Yeah. So, or actually, this is our fourth performance. We had an invited dress, a preview last night, opening night, and tonight. We're already in our fourth performance, and we, this is like day. I should, I should. I'll get the facts to you. I think I'm, <laughs> I think it's like day seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. Of, of yeah. being together. Period. That's amazing. So. We have you know, very spare um, production values. We have people who volunteer to do tech just as much as the actors are volunteering their time. And um, you do get together some wonderful projects, some very special things happen. And we have, of course the community is coming out to see it. They're supporting us all the way. People's own projects may be bubbling up underneath them and they can know that if you're gonna invest, you can, you can start to plan a budget that you might be able to manage come in with a friend or not with a with a friend with an equity actor that you know or whatever and um, plan your project and and we would see something new and new and new and new um, the casts are not exclusively equity actors but the member code person who's doing the project is an equity actor I see. I so see. it is a, you know f- that is the, 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 the only restriction I guess do the other actors get points can they accrue points um, towards their equity that would be status? kind of neat but no okay. <laughs> and that's a very rare that's a very uh, you know a lofty place sure. and very sure. desirable and very like you have to achieve that right. so what well, the good news is fourth wall theater who's a completely startup theater has just reached that pinnacle and is now oh. a space where the younger actors that they hire and they still have to hire X amount of non you know member sure. candidates sure. and young young actors and just member candidates not or regardless old of age. actors yes yeah, so regardless of age I'm sorry <laughs> that's terrible and um, and AD players too yeah um, and more into the scene they didn't used to be and now are there that's an EMC place right so you can earn your points but really they had to reach that and that comes from X amount of that you know, revenue, X amount of years, X amount of audience consistently. So, And yay. keeping with the rules, you know, yeah. like saying we're going to do it this way and mm-hmm. and uh, abiding by those mm-hmm. rules. And they're very dedicated, you know, and as the theaters are here to, to um, better and better quality and paying actors, um, you know, a, a, a decent wage and, and keeping keeping within the rules. Yeah. Right, right. So this has been a little bit of breaking of rules, but we sort of all agree to break the rules. Um, and, and I knew sanctioned I could, and you, blessed. It's yes, sanctioned right. and blessed. And come in and do this project, and it's a four-week commitment, so people can say yes. I have to say along the way, I approach many different directors. You know, just when I started thinking about it in January, which is when I started, and in January I got this space and match. I'm like, if I don't call now, it's gone. Right. And I did, and boy, I got it, because it was yeah. gone the, the, after yeah. I booked it. And so it is, you know, thinking ahead, and, you know, it's, then you have time to, to do it. And I approached several different directors. I approached several different actors. I was so floored. They all wanted to do it. I, I was so floored. They all wanted to do it. They're like, I, But they're busy. <laughs> sure. So the good news of that is people, good people are busy. But they want to they work with you. People, everybody wants to act. So 
so it, it was a pleasure to just get that re reinforcement and um, I got it all along the way and we ended up with the right cast I mean it all works out so what about the course. rights to the play so yes let's talk about well, that. get the rights to the play you have to you you are officially um, a non-professional rights so the, the the rights are a little bit lower okay but it, just so you know non-professional rights it, I would imagine that even you would be surprised. You have to be at a certain level for them to consider it not the non-professional rights. Even if you are a working equity or um, right. equity hires, there's still a threshold that they put you over in the non-professional area. So the rights are manageable. That's Got not you. the biggie. The, the rent is, is the sure. biggie. Well, but if when you're here at Match, you get their mailing list, right. you, which is well, a huge deal. You get their box office, yes, which is the number right. one thing. So uh, actors who are thinking about this, we can we can do everything. We can we can do everything, but we can't do a box office. Just step back and think about the fact that you can't be there, and it's a website, right? It's an established website that has emails, not necessarily mailing list where they're physically mailing, correct? Them, but correct. they have their own email list where their blasts right. are going out, you know to people that volunteer to get them. So it's again, it's not an um, intrusive email list. I think they probably have the same rules everybody does, which is if you don't want to be on this list, un unsubscribe, yeah. yeah. So if the people who are receiving, you know, what's on at Match this week, they have a huge base for that. So uh, as you rent here, that starts like the week before you come in and uh, through your run. So that's good. So it is very expensive, but I wanted that, and I wanted the box office. And even with that, we're still getting the word out just through through friends. Sure. Nothing sells a show like word of mouth. Well, and it is an absolutely beautiful venue, too, So, and it's super cool. So if you're hot out there, people, and you want to come and see a beautiful show, like maybe tomorrow when it's over 100 degrees, come to the match, bring a sweater, because it's an amazing place to <laughs> yeah. come in the summer. You'll right. be very cool. Right, right, right. Wonderful. <laughs> so, Pamela, talk to us about WIT, and talk to us about why you wanted to do this project and who is the author by? This is it's, Margaret Edson. Yeah. She is and was, when she wrote this play, it's a 20 year anniversary. So that was the first mm. thing. I realized it was the 20 year anniversary of the Pulitzer Prize winning play, Wit. 1999 Pulitzer Prize winning play. Margaret Edson was then and is now a middle school teacher. And she did some time um, on a cancer ward as a volunteer. And she wrote one play and seems pretty insistent on having this be the only one. And just in terms of playwriting, it's really well done. So it moves lightning fast. It's very un-cliché. We know hospital stories, and we know what's going to happen. So the character comes out and says, you know, <laughs> I don't, I, uh, it is not my intention to give away the plot, but I think I die at the end. <laughs> so yeah, so getting your no laugh. No yeah, yeah. right. And getting your laugh was helpful yes. right there because yes. she's very witty through the whole thing. Um, the character is... It's a double entendre. Yes, and she's deflecting what's happening to her with her intelligence and her wit. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what it's all about. But Margaret Edson has written this one play, Pulitzer Prize winner, 20-year anniversary, and I thought, this is great, I'll do it. And I, I had gotten the chance to do the role before. Ah. And I did it here in Texas before I even moved here four um, colleagues who I went to graduate school with, and, I, and they had formed a company called the Texas Repertory Theater, which yes, is still out absolutely, there. Yes, absolutely, yes. Which is still out there. It's kind of reforming um, is it? many, because many they years. Were, they were disbanded mm -hmm. when I got back in 2016, and so are they yeah, coming back Yeah, they're coming again? back. Okay. They, they may be um, a different type of thing, yeah. and I don't. they don't have a space, but they're still incorporated, and okay. they kept their name. Okay. And um, so, That's good to so, hear. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a wonderful production at that time, wonderful production. And uh, it st stuck in me. And um, uh, uh, when I read it, went back to it again, I thought, well, okay, here it's the Pulitzer Prize winner. That's a, that's, a, that's a marketing tool. And I read it again. I thought, oh, wow. Because I read it again. I was too young when I did it. But they asked me to do it. They're like, Pammy, we know you can do it. I'm like, oh, I'm so young. So I was, uh, I was 43. And I'm 53. Mm -hmm. And when I read it this time, I went, oh. This is a play about being 50. <laughs> I had no idea. Of course, I had no idea that I had no idea because that didn't occur to me at all. Right. I thought, oh, I, I don't understand this woman. I, 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 that's, that's not the thing. And I read it again. I'm like, oh, my God. Because there's a, there's a piece of it with the young doctor, too, that yes, I think is... Yes, yes. Well, first when she's introduced to him, you know, just right. like, here's your doctor. Oh, boy. You know, I mean, my doctor is 12. Great. You know, <laughs> and that, it, it's a little moment and... Uh, it, it, it's not even in the play, but I, I'm, that's it. Her doctor is her student, her former student, who's, you know, 
two years out of undergrad and three years out of grad, whatever, doc, you know, medical school. Right, but, right. You know, he's, no, he's 26. Our actor is 26. And she's great, great. Because it doesn't mean anything when you're 26. And I, when I read the play, um, you know, they're being 50 and you thought, oh, it's, there's just, there's, there's, a, there's a change in yeah, your life. Yeah. There's a loss. Right. And it's, it's what we face, regardless of, you know, health. Yes. It's just, it's a passage. And so I thought, oh my God. And in that same time, she's a teacher. This is a big thing. She's a teacher. And I um, teach, um, you know, intro as, as you know, with my <laughs> intro to theater at UHD, um, oh, University great. of Houston downtown, great. which I'm enjoying. I'm, I used to teach um, for, for several years at Sam Houston State in Huntsville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just, great, just a few schools. sections. Yes, yeah. outstanding with outstanding students. Um, in, and um, and I taught there as an adjunct in two, uh, two to four sections, which was actually a full course load. So I taught a lot, you know, several years there, and now I'm at UHD with a few sections, much closer, and outstanding students that I, I love. And um, I teach intro, you know, and um, I'm acting for some experienced people and some very inexperienced people. I, I love it. I love introducing them to it, passionate about it. And I've been a teacher now for 10 years because when I did this play at, at Texas Rep, I hadn't been. Yeah. And I was just starting. I was just starting to teach, taking, taking, being, getting opportunities, very lucky, to have um, a university uh, opportunity to right, teach, right. you know, just having that opportunity and, and getting a chance to when I moved to Houston start. And uh, so she's a teacher, she's 50, and um, I just, it spoke to me in a beautiful way. Um, the play really works, and I will say our review came out this morning, and one of the things that I think the experienced reviewer was ready to sort of see and watch and look for was how does, same question, why are we doing this play again? What is going on? Oh, cancer still with us. Yeah. Um, this play still works. Right. She, she said something like, it still endures, it still resonates. That was her word. This play still resonates. So that's our, that's our headline, Wit Still Resonates. And um, um, despite what we may think, and when I had our opening night audience last night, it, it occurs to you, as, as it happens with actors, like, oh my God, we're all so experienced or whatever. We know these plays. They have been done. Um, but many people, nay, most people have never heard this play. They've never heard this play before. I mean, this community is pretty specialized. Most people have never heard this play before. And this will be right. the first time they get to, and I say hear it, right, right and see it. Um, so it has some beautiful, beautiful messages. Um, this is a cancerous world, and it's certainly not a woman's issue play, too, which is another thing that I thought in this kind of Me Too moment. Mm-hmm. It's not about violence. It's not about um, intrusion issues. Um, it, is, it, is, it, is, um, it is about uh, just this um, cancer diagnosis. Right. And I have watched a couple of single men in our audiences so far. We only, like I say, four performances. They're in it. And I'm like, oh, my God, because it could be also this woman's play, right? And whether they were with partners or not, right? I, I saw people, you know, with their wives or with their partners, and then I also saw some just single men. And I thought, oh, my God, they came, first of all, right? And then they're leaning forward and leaning in because it's so smart. And it's a pleasure to listen to argument in any play. Right when we go to theater, my best theater experience is argument when the they're facing something that argues back and forth. And, and she's so articulate. Yeah. And she's so funny. Yeah. In yeah. her wit. In her wit. And, and she it, teaches a witty poet, a uh, 17th-century poet, Dunn. John Donne. Love it. Um, you know, people don't even know that. I mean, uh, Shakespeare's time, but he was a contemporary of Shakespeare's um, writing at the same time. He's sort of convoluted um, uh, poetry and he did a lot of holy uh, religious poems um, on a theme so he has these very famous holy sonnets death be not proud which is of course his most famous Um, he says death be not proud though some have called thee mighty and dreadful for thou art not so and uh, so the people don't know the end of that (laughs) and there's more (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but uh, the rest of his poetry is not um, hard if you hear it and you give yourself an ear 
you go, oh, that's so beautiful, that's so right. And he's facing this, um, 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 what is it, um, salvation? He wants to know, because doesn't, it doesn't hold up. If you're a brilliant person, and he was, you can't scientifically say there's salvation. And yet, as human beings, it's something we know. <laughs> It's, or at least I yearning. feel like yes, need, need or yearn for. Yearn, there's, there's yearning. There's also a connectedness yeah, yeah. about our souls that is, I'm sorry, so doesn't not connected to organized religion. It's connected to our experience of being alive. So he's writing about that. Why, can, why doesn't this hold up to scrutiny? What, and, and over and over and over again, um, challenging. Right. Um, you, you know, death, salvation, and faith. Life, life, faith, life, death, God, and soul. <laughs> that's our that's our phrase: um, life, death, soul, God. But if you see on our poster, um, uh, we have um, life, comma death, period, mm-hmm. capital S, because it's a new sentence. Soul, comma God, period. So it's two two sentences there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, beautiful poetry with those kinds of yummy right. things. Right. And the play is funny, like you say, um, and she's deflecting them. You know, she, her way is to teach through it. She starts to teach the audience because she's a teacher. So she's going to uh, face her own death, her own diagnosis by teaching through it. Um, you know. Uh, Which is a, a form that she's sure, familiar with sure. and feels comfortable with. Right. It yeah. could be anything. It would be however you approach your life. Um, this is how she approaches her. So she she does that, and then it and and and, and comes to to uh, to accept what's what's happening to her. Um, there's also in, with the cancer death and diagnosis, it's um, not the person's own choice, and regardless of how we say, oh, but it's she's. You know, she she came to accept. You know this. I, I think that that's wrong. I think it's not a choice. Maybe you have to, but um, it's hard when someone else says you're dying now. Right. That's pretty hard because you have no intention of, and uh, it's not a beautiful death. I think that's another wonderful mm-hmm. non cliche mm-hmm. thing. And it's, with female death mm-hmm. in. Um, in movies and certainly yes. you know and oh the heroine the, you know you know the, or to be saved and right, to die right. is, is a the melodrama damsel. staple mm-hmm. and um it's beautiful and i succumb to it i love stories like that you know I, there's i could mention a few you sure. know there and um without it's not sentimental it's not melodramatic and it's not beautiful um so i think that that is in the play it's not a beautiful death um, but she is she is glorious at the end. She's not beautiful. Well, and as I, are we all. Sure. And <laughs> I feel like, you know, this play, what I find so beautiful about it is it has this naturalistic piece of it where you're grounded in reality. Mm-hmm. There's no magical things that happen except for this language. Yeah, and that's except, a neat way of saying it. Right. That's what's magical. Right. And, and about, transporting. And right, her own personality and her own love and her own spirit, mm-hmm. which is that balance of, you know, so it's a naturalistic play, but there is, you know, some otherworldliness about it as well. And I believe that this is such a, a timely thing, especially here in Houston, and we're like the cancer capital of the world. And it, right? There's so many, I mean, it's really, it was an unspoken word or an unspoken, you know, don't mention it because that per, you know, that's that's such an extreme. Yes. But now it's just not that way, you know, and that's why thank goodness early detection, talking about it, going in for checkups. Yes. That's what we've learned. But right. before this play happened, and this play is one of the reasons why early detection has succeeded in helping people have longer lives that's with amazing. diagnosis. This play is one of those big reasons, it's particularly for ovarian cancer, mm. which was never spoken, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, it, you know, pancreatic cancer, all the cancers that our cancerous mm-hmm. world suffers, we didn't say the word cancer. We didn't talk about it at all. And now that's really changed. So I would say that's the number one thing that's changed, that's dated, if there's that word, about the play is... When this play was out, it was still, still, we're talking 2000, 1999. People didn't say, you know. Mm -hmm. Does your character feel shame about the cancer? I think she's embarrassed. Yeah. Is she embarrassed to be sick? Yes. She says, um, 
it, it, she suffers um, indignities. Of course. You know, and just the hospital life and your robe and your, it's just, it's, you know, and I even bumped into an extraordinary man um, who just was telling me about his own wife's passing of this very same thing. It's happened, you know, that's how the gods work, yeah. And he, he was said, she just had an indi- a, a dignity index. And at a certain point, it tipped over. And I, I, I just shook my head. I thought, oh my God, that's in the play. You know? Right. It's just and I too mean, much. And After a while, it's like... <laughs> and, and who wants to be that way? Yeah. And especially, I think we as Americans, we're this, these independent people. Yeah. And we want to be self-reliant. And that's part of our uh, MO, our... Modus well, operandi, things. I guess, it's and away. right, and to have that uh, is is a really difficult um, situation. Yeah. So really I'm hard. so excited that we're going to do that. You're going to do this, and I can't wait to see it. And then, so let's talk about uh, if you can talk about the other actors. Who else is okay. in the play? Wonderful. Okay, so we have a wonderful cast. I have Tracy Ahern, who plays um, the nur- nurse Susie Monahan. Tracy is one of the pioneers of the Houston Equity Festival in that she produced um, a equity project code a couple years ago, two years ago, doing a show here at Match called Motherhood Out Loud, and it did very well. And so she kind of inspired people. Um, the other p- pioneer I'll mention is Ron Jones, um, an actor in town who produced on the project code. I love code. Ron. Yeah. So those are the pioneers. They were out there. Now we've got this kind of banner. Um, okay, and then my, my second uh, actor is uh, Susan Schaffner, veteran of... of National tours, Tuts, several state, you know, plays at, at, at uh, you know, from, from Into the Woods to, I won't remember, Cinderella, others, you know, an extremely beautiful actress who is playing Vivian's own mentor, her own professor when she was an undergrad. Her, her probably her best friend was her own mentor, her own teacher. Um, and this teacher who comes, um, who comes into her life. So heartbreaking. Yes. I can't talk about that yeah. scene. And then I'll, the I'll gentleman, Gabriel Rogojo who is um, uh, sort of a young actor to watch, mentioned by the Houston Press. He's out of UH theater training just probably uh, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half. Very young um, actor, very, um, very excellent, who's been at Catastrophic, who's been at Rec Room Arts, and has done several um, plays that that really stuck out in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. He's Mm -hmm. been in quite a few, a stages repertory theater as well. and, and then we have uh, John William Stevens, who's sort of a veteran of s- several stages, yes, over and over and over again. He's playing uh, my, my doctor, the, 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 the hospital uh, sort of um, um, uh, prestigious doctor who is on, in charge of the, the cancer cases. And he is Vivian's uh, diagnosis doctor, and that's Dr. Kalikian. And that's the cast. We have um, some students who came in, uh, UHD, uh, University of Houston downtown, among others, some professional actors who came in to be um, the ensemble cast, and they play interns, and they double then as uh, university students, and they, you know, technicians who are giving Vivian her required tests, and we have these folks sort of swirling around the play in a video, on, in video format, so we captured them in video, and this allowed us to do um, a lot of the play um, in, in video segments, which I, I, I think is a neat level to our play, I'll, 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 I'll say please go to Houston Equity Festival on Facebook, please go to match.org, click on the show WIT, and you'll see pictures of what I mean. It allows us to create some stage pictures that are what we wanted, which is Vivi is having an out-of-body experience, right? So the person on the screen is not necessarily doing what live Vivian on stage is doing. So when you have tests and you feel like this is just not happening to me, we tried to capture that. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. Yeah. And what about your creative team in terms of like yeah. your uh, Yes, sound? thank you for mentioning. Yes. Yeah. We had Manning Mott on lights. Um, we have uh, a sound design from Vance Johnson, our director. Vance Johnson, our director. So good. <laughs> Fresh from Booty Candy with yes. Catastrophic. Yes, and was Gabriel amazing. was in that show. Oh, so, I got yeah, you. Yeah, Wonderful. Um, yes, Booty Candy, which I love too, at Catastrophic, yeah. Um, and uh, we have Manning Mott, we have uh, 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 some, a colleague of Vance's, Lionel Hilliard, who is the uh, professor, a, a teacher at um, the, uni- uh, no, it's a Houston Art, Art Institute, the Houston Art Institute uh, in, in film production. And he brought in his like top students, sort of, sort of like graduate level students, Lakeisha White, 
who shot the, this thing, and Lionel, who sort of uh, produced, produced it and, and she put, cut it all together and we had even had some of his other students um, who came in on camera yeah. and uh, a huge huge effort um, you know just outstanding so uh, we're, we're thrilled and we're so thankful for for you Melody for coming in and oh my gosh hello. my gosh no way <laughs> spreading the word well and you know we've got that, only two weeks so that's yeah. right that's right well that's why I try to get to things early yeah. so that I can help promote a little bit yeah. and I know I need to let you go because yeah. you need to get ready yeah. but I just want to thank you so much for spending this time with us everybody I know it's going to be a great show so we play, yes we play this weekend tonight Saturday the seven, no it's the sixth it's a set Friday the sixth. We play tomorrow the seventh of September. Is and it at Sunday seven thirty start in the evenings okay. always at seven thirty on Sundays. Tomorrow we start at three. Next week, which is twelve, eleven or thirteen no, it's uh thirteen, fourteen, fifteen no, twelve, eleven, twelve. 12, 13, 14, and 15. <laughs> 12, 13, 14, and 15 of September. I'll put it on the podcast page yeah. so that you can see all the dates. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You won't get confused. That's great. 7.30 in the evening. That's um, great. Sundays at 3. Please come and please come and see us. Well, thank you so much again, and break a leg tonight. Okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.